Today, Dr. Ho will be sharing with us from the book of Acts, chapter 17. This is the continuation of chapter 16, the journey of Paul. Oh, I have a special feeling uh, in last Sunday's sermon. Paul originally wanted to go back to his first journey, visiting the brothers there. When Paul was working around Asia, she felt that the things are not going his way. He knew that the Holy Spirit is blocking him to move forward and even stopped him working. Then he saw a vision. He went from Asia to Europe. I feel this is a very special journey. Before that, Paul would have his plan. His plan was to preach the gospel in Asia. But now it seems that uh, his plan cannot succeed. He could um, hear the new calling to Europe. So this is a new beginning for Paul's um, mission trips. Since then, Paul will not plan for himself. This is very important. He has to be led by the Holy Spirit. Wherever the Holy Spirit lead him, he will follow. So this is a breakthrough for Paul's um, strategies in missionary. Then we could see that uh, some missionary organization, they have their own plan. So what is the culture and what is this place like? Who should we send for the mission? The how should we uh, work around? But when you look at the second journey of uh, Paul's mission, it seems that he followed the wind. Just like um, the wind blowing, and then Paul followed. In this chapter, um, it mentioned that Paul has gone to three places. I think it's not the original plan of Paul. So he started uh, coming to this place, Thessalonic, Thessalonica. Paul knew that he has to go to this place. And he's in a hurry off Thessalonica and go to other places. And over the night, he's being led to Berea by some people. Because the Jews in Thessalonica pursue after him. So over the night, he left the place. We could see that Paul didn't just stop at Berea. He, he just preached the gospel. Because those, um, the persecutor chased him from Thessalonica all the way to Berea. And after that, Paul has to hurry off Berea and came to Athens. We could see three places, A, B, C. Apart from place A, Thessalonica, this is the place where Paul planned to go for his mission. For B and C, that is Berea and Athens, is not in Paul's plan. We could see that wherever Paul went, no matter in good times or bad times, he would preach the gospel there until um, he stopped to preach. 
So in those places, uh, Paul kept on adjusting his mindset. But we could see his mission is like he's being led by the wind, led by the Holy Spirit. That he would meet up with some new opportunities. This is led by the Holy Spirit, and he preached the gospel. Paul emptied himself fully. How the Holy Spirit used him, according to the current environment, he will follow. If we say we have to imitate Paul, so we have to learn, be led by the Holy Spirit. No matter in good times or bad times, Wherever he goes, he would preach the gospel there. The focus of this scripture is verse 16. While Paul was waiting for them in Athens, he was greatly distressed to see that the city was full of idols. He was greatly distressed. So what is it about? He talk about it talk about the feelings of Paul. So in the book of Acts, when we look at how the writer Luke wrote about Paul's journey, missionary journey, it's not uh, just reporting what what has happened to Paul's mission. He could even write Paul's feelings. Or it's because of the eagerness inside Paul's heart. It moved him to continue preaching the gospel in his missions. So if we say we have to learn from Paul, this is something we need to grab hold of. It's this eagerness, this passion, being zealous for God. When he, looked, when he saw all these idols, he has much feeling in his heart. He was greatly distressed. Okay, let us look at today's map. We could see Asia, the place in Asia. Macedonia belongs to Europe. In between Asia and Europe, there is the sea. Oh, the Asian Sea. Asian Sea. Because Hong Kong, we have this Gold Coast, so we know Asian Sea. Uh, because there is a property, a building called a, the Asian Coast. Today we talk about Paul's journey. It happened alongside the Asian Sea. At the beginning, he started at Philippi and then went to Thessalonica, down to Beria, and then he set sailed by ship. And through the land, he went to Athens. So he preached alongside the coast. So this is the missionary trip along the coast. So it's not uh, um, that the Paul planned ahead of all these places. So how the Holy Spirit led Paul is using the environment. When the environment is really bad, when the Jews continue to chase after Paul, so Paul preached the gospel alongside the coast, city by city. So he's you can see that he's being always being pursued by others, and he was stopped in a place. Started to preach the gospel, started his missionary work, until the situation got really worse. And then he's being arranged by people to go to other places. So that there are two times he's being sent off by people. If it is according to Paul's own desire, he would just 
continue to stay in that place. But when all the people see that the environment is no good, then they sent off Paul to other places, from one place to another. So we really uh, admire, appreciate what Paul has done, no matter in good or bad times, no matter where, everywhere, anywhere he went, he continued to preach the gospel. What is the topic for today? So in good times or bad times, be sealers for the gospel. If I don't have this sealer's heart, when distress or the difficulties come, we, we just think of how to protect ourselves. And we will not think about how to preach the gospel further. When Paul saw uh, a lot of idols, a lot of temples, he was greatly distressed, and this is his motivation. I call this divine compulsion. So this is the compulsion coming from God. So it's the compulsion from God. So he must do that because of this motivation and compulsion from God. And Paul described his feeling. He said, I'm in debt of preaching the gospel. I must pay back. And this is the compulsion inside his heart. Let's look at the first place. He came to Thessalonica. So after passing through some cities, he came here. He came to the Jewish synagogue, verse 1. Verse 2, as his custom was, Paul went into the synagogue. And on three Sabbath days, he reasoned with them from the scriptures. Where is the Jewish synagogue? In the Mediterranean Sea area, especially for those cities, uh, they are prosperous with commerce, business. There will be Jewish synagogue. Because the Jews uh, live there and they uh, do business there. So in Philippians, we could see that as compared with the Salonica, it's not so prosperous there because they do not have many Jewish synagogues in Philippi. Paul came to this big city. The Salonica is the capital of Macedonia. According to the Jewish custom, is on three Sabbath days, Paul reasoned with them from the scriptures. To the Jews, how should Paul preach the gospel to them? The focus is here. Oh, the Jesus who was killed, who was murdered, as according to the prophecy of God in the Bible. He is the Messiah. Because in the concept of the Jews, they knew there will be the Messiah coming. He is the vessel of God, and he's the anointed one. But they never thought that this anointed one would suffer and even die. And the Jews thought that this anointed one should be riding on a horse and be, be surrounded by the army coming into Jerusalem. However, this anointed one was riding on a donkey, humble himself coming to Jerusalem. But is it recorded in the Bible? Is it recorded in the Old Testament? So it is recorded in the book as well. So do you see from the Bible, there is this servant who suffer 
and die for us. It is in the book of Isaiah 23. We, we read about the uh, eunuch in Antioch. When we read, read the Bible, we might have some areas that we don't understand. And we didn't take care of uh, some details. And for those who think um, you are familiar with the Bible, in fact, we overlook some of the details as well. I remember there was um, some other theology school, the students came to visit 611. They talk about healing and deliverance. So in the Gospels, have you read about Jesus' healing and deliverance? Brothers and sisters, in 611, you, you think, oh, this is so natural that we do healing and deliverance. But those um, theology school students, when they ask this question, it seems that when they read the gospel, the four gospels, they have not read about Jesus healing and casting out demons. And in their church, they will not mention about this. Even though you see all these uh, scriptures written in the Bible, you just overlooked it. It seems sad, the book. You couldn't um, see the Holy Spirit working. It's the same for the Jews reading the Bible, reading the Old Testament. So about some details of the Messiah, they have never imagined it. All th their thinking is that this Messiah is a victorious king. They never thought that this Messiah would have to suffer and die. For example, in the book of Deuteronomy, those who've been hanged on the cross is cursed. And Jesus was hanged on the cross. Is he the one being cursed? And they would think, how come he's the Messiah who saved us? So we, when we talk to the Jews, we must look at the details of the scriptures. We, we need to talk to them in greater details. Do you understand what I'm telling you? It's through the scriptures that they know, they think they are familiar. They must see that Jesus is the Messiah who suffered, who died for us. And also to accomplish the will of God. When the Jews heard what, how Paul explained the scripture with them, then they believed. Verse 4, he says, A large number of God-fearing Greeks. Why the Greeks were in synagogue, in a Jewish synagogue? Yes. And we call them God-fearing Greeks. They fear the God that the Israelites worshipped. We call them God-fearing people. God-fearer. You can say that they, be, they join the Jewish uh, Judaism. And many Greeks, be, they believed in God. And also a few prominent women also believe in God. What is the meaning of prominent women? That is their husband has high standing position in the society. And they have influential power. We, we say that these prominent women, they also believe in Jesus. And Jesus, uh, poor, knew and also uh, taken hold of all these uh, high class people. You know, the Jews, sometimes they, they are jealous of the Gentiles believing in God. Verse 5. The Jews were jealous. Because like the Gen even the Gentiles believe in the Lord, and the Jews didn't feel good at all. They were jealous. So in, in the book of Romans... So it is also the experience of Paul's missionary journey. 
Paul continued to preach the gospel to the Gentiles. Many, when many Gentile believes, then the Jews were jealous. They don't feel good, and they rose up against Paul. Verse five. So. The Jews were round. They rounded up some bad characters from the marketplace, formed a mob, and started a riot in the city. So Jason, they rushed to Jason's house. Jason is the name of Greek. And the people, the Jews, chased after Paul, coming to Jason's house, but couldn't find him. Somebody protected Paul. Verse six. But they did not find them, and they dragged Jason and some other brothers before the city officials. So we will not talk about the details. They accused Paul of starting the riot, and they label Paul saying that. Paul is the one who stirred up heavens and earth. Originally, like in the Jewish、um, synagogue, people just worship God. And Paul came to preach the gospel of the Messiah, proving that Jesus is the Messiah. Then many gen Gentiles they believe in Jesus. To the Jews, it seems that they are being stirred up because they just do、um, the the general things of worshiping the Lord. Every one of our life is just like them. You know, we might say that somebody who preached the gospel to me, and they are stirring up my life. Because, like in my daily life. There will be a lot of changes since I believe in Jesus. My life will change once I believe in the gospel, believe in Jesus. So when we go out to preach the gospel, we are also stirring up other people's life, making them feel not comfortable. But if there are some other people whose life is like confused and distressed, or somebody who has lost their job, or with a broken marriage. They always argue with the children. Their life is being stirred up greatly. And this gospel, when we preach to them, we will really grab hold of them, stir up their life, and this gospel will change their lives. And we will bring them to a new life that they haven't gone through. In the past, they were like orphans; they just trust themselves, relied on themselves. But now they found God, and they need a new life. So, if we are afraid of stirring up people's life, we cannot preach the gospel. We have to go everywhere, stir up people's life. We should not worry about how they respond when we preach the gospel. We just go ahead. If he believes, then this is the sovereignty of God. Because God has to save all those who believe Him, so Paul has become someone who stirred up the world. Over the night, Paul is being sent to Berea. Verse ten. On arriving there, they went to the Jewish synagogue. Then they examined the Bibles with the people, in order to prove that Jesus. Is the Christ? He, she is not like Paul. Is not the victim. He's not being accused or wronged. Paul eventually has come to like a desperate death. This is being predestined by God's plan. He explained to the people that Jesus is the Messiah being sent by God, 
So Paul, with great eagerness, he preached the message and examined the scriptures every day with them. So how in the past, like uh, Jesus used 40 days to be with the disciples, preaching his words. After his resurrection, Paul is doing the same here. So Paul has to tell the people that Jesus has gone through death and resurrection. So, so in the uh, Song of David, he also said that the Messiah is to come and he would suffer and die and resurrect. And many people believed after Paul's preaching and even some prominent Greek women and many Greek men believed in Jesus. This time in verse 12, we could see the prominent Greek women is before the Greek men. Perhaps these prominent Greek women, they have special status. That's why uh, maybe the number of um, women who believe in Jesus is more than the number of men, the Greek men. So the way they pre uh, the people believed in Thessalonica and also in Beria, they are a bit different. But in Beria, is more prominent Greek women believing in Jesus than more uh, Greek men. We could see that Paul is in great difficulties. But he had great harvest. Uh, people really appreciate and admire him. Last night, I talked to a friend. You know, we talk about uh, in Alaska how people, uh, they catch the crab, the icy crab. It's very big crab. You know, this crab experienced the strong wind and the storm. Uh, and also the catcher of these crabs also experienced the great storm. But they had great harvest and satisfaction. Paul is the same experienced many storms and difficulties. He had great harvest. He built up the churches and take many people, take on many people. Then the Jews came to uh, Beria to, to try to catch, trying to pursue after poor. Then the, the people brought escort poor to Athens and then left with instructions for Silas and Timothy to join him as soon as possible in verse 15. So Paul came to Athens together with Paul and Silas. Together with Silas and Timothy. In Athens, Paul left his companion, left his team no matter how great is Paul, he needs the team to work together to preach the gospel. And Timothy stayed there. I want to mention about Timothy. I remember when Paul wrote to Timothy, he encouraged him, no matter in good times or bad times, you have to preach the gospel, preach the word of God. Paul is not saying this by his experience. He said to Timothy what uh, Paul and Timothy had experienced during the missionary journey. He said, Timothy, you have seen this. It's through the great storm and difficulties we preach the gospel. No matter it's good times or bad times, you go and preach the word of God. Paul reminded Timothy about his uh, past experience. Verse 16 to 34 is the last paragraph. 
We could see that Paul was greatly distressed to see the city was full of idols. Verse 16. He's not just being eager. He continued to reason. He continued to reason in the synagogue with the Jews. Verse 17. As well as in the marketplace day by day with those who happened to be there. We could see that the fire of preaching the gospel is really great inside Paul. Whenever Paul um, saw any people, he would grab hold of them and preach the gospel. He said, Jesus is the Christ. Jesus is the anointed one being sent by God. We could see a lot of Gentiles here. There are two groups of people. Verse 18, a group of Epicurean and stock philosophers. They're the philosophers, and Paul disputed with them. These people, they despised Paul. <coughs> Saying that he, he just speak blasphemy, you just blah, blah, blah. I don't know what you are talking about. And also they said, he seems to be advocating foreign gods. So he's talking about the Greek fairy tales. Because Paul talked about Jesus and his resurrection. Then Paul talked about the message of resurrection. Because when he's being sent to the meeting of Arepicus, verse 19, it's a meeting. So he, he saw the people there, the officials, and they, and they asked some question. So may we know what this new teaching is that you are preaching in verse 19. The Greeks can talk a lot about philosophy. Verse 21, all the Athenians and the foreigners who live there spend their time doing nothing but talk about and listening to the latest ideas. They can freely talk. Now they ask Paul to explain what he said, his message. So they need to examine it. What Paul, what you talk about, we need to examine. So this meeting need to um, take charge of two things. One is about the religion in the city. And the second thing is about the teaching of the preacher. Then Paul explained to these people. Paul talk to the Gentiles about religion, about the faith. It's very difficult for Paul to say that, oh, this is the Christ that we, we uh, you can see in the Old Testament. Th this is how the Old Testament refer the Messiah as Jesus. So for all these um, people, the Gentiles, they, they have no knowledge about the religion how could Paul explain the scriptures? Paul said, I know you are God-fearing. And you have a lot of uh, idols and temples. So Paul established a common ground with them. They are standing in the same position. So we, we call them like they have the religious belief. So even though they, they are having different religion, Paul really say that, oh, I know you have different religion and you have different idols and gods there. But I could see, I found an altar, verse 23. I found an altar with this inscription to an unknown God. So these unknown gods are in your temples.
So P Y people they worship unknown gods and so many idols because of their fear they want to worship many different gods in different temples. Paul answer into the second step of preaching the gospel. You know, um, the unknown God that you see actually, we have a real God, the God that we know create heavens and heaven, heavens and earth. And this God, our Creator, has given us life. He reigns over the world and people. And our God doesn't need people to worship Him this way. And this is a breakthrough point. So it's different from what their thinking is about. So in in their own religion, they would burn incense and they would worship different kinds of idols. But God, Paul said, this God, we don't need to burn incense to Him, but He is the Creator. He reigns in our lives. Verse 26, the second part of verse 26, he determined the time set for them and the exact places where they should live. Our God is above all things. You know, in Hong Kong, we have our own culture. So we are proud of Hong Kong. But this God is not the God for Hong Kong only. He's the God above all nations and people. For the people in Athens, they are so proud of their own culture and their own city. Paul said, this God reigns in all nations and people. He surpasses all human beings. So everything belongs to God. Verse 30. In the past, God overlooked such ignorance, but now He commands all people everywhere to repent. It's not the people in um, Athens only. So everywhere, the people need to repent. Why? Because God is doing one thing. His salvation has already come. And with His salvation, God's judgment also comes. Now, if you receive this Jesus, you receive salvation. If you reject him, you continue to live in the underseen at this moment. You have to face this God of judgment. Don't don't think that if you don't believe, you are condemned. Every one of us, because of our behavior, we're already being judged. Just like saving money. When we save up to a certain moment of time or when it's sufficient, we need to get the money out. When we sin, it's the same. Paul said the wage of sin is death. So when our sin has come to a certain extent, we will face judgment. Just like uh, the broken marital relationship, So during this process of marriage, there might be a lot of arguments. And at the end, they couldn't bear with each other. So at the end, it's broken out. They burn out. Every one of us, we have to face our own sins and be judged. When we believe in Jesus at this moment, Our sins are forgiven. It's not because I don't believe in Jesus, God will judge me. Actually, the sin judge myself. This is how Paul preached the gospel. And at the end, he he explained where's the salvation from. God already raised Jesus to life, judging the world with justice by men he has appointed. 
he has given proof. First, th this is verse 31. He has given proof of this to all men by raising him from the dead. Paul was standing before all people, preached the gospel. This is the witness. Paul was originally a great sinner, but he could st stood up and then preach Christ. So we could see that uh, Paul has resurrected. The resurrected Lord is in Paul. So this is the testimony that we could see. But when the Greeks, they heard this, they couldn't, uh, st st couldn't stood. They couldn't stand Paul. And they were, some of them sneered. How come they have never heard of uh, a dead man being raised to life? So, so this word resurrection, like it's so weird to them. They couldn't believe. How come uh, there is this message of resurrection? And then they, they sent Paul out from Athens as well. So the meeting just stopped there. So you leave, you leave us. They have not accepted what Paul said. Oh, the Paul has much feeling towards this kind of response. That is to say that what he has said has not been accepted. Even though this is um, a city with freedom of speech. And then it goes on to say some people believe in the Lord. So among them, uh, verse 34, a few men became followers of Paul and believed. Among them was Dionysius, is a member of the Aropagus. So he's the, like the government official. And also a woman named Dana Danaris. So let's not just despise this effectiveness. Paul knew that once you believe in Jesus, then the whole family household will receive Jesus as well, will be saved. This Damaris is the leader in Greek. In Philippi, like a leader and the whole family household believe in Jesus. And when Paul and Silas was in the prison, like the... The one in charge of the prison believe in Jesus, and the whole family household also believe in Jesus. For this woman, Dimaris, he she will also become someone who will lead the whole family to Christ. Why Lydia um, want to want Paul to stay? Because there are many other relatives have not heard of the gospel. That's why Lydia begged Paul to stay behind. Oh, I have a lot of uh, uh, business partner. They have not heard of the gospel. Please stay. Once upon a time, I when I was in a mission trip, we brought we brought a, a woman to Christ, and then she brought us to his uh, hometown. We went with her, and a whole group of people surrounded us. And they wanted us to stay behind for dinner. And they said, we have many other relatives, haven't heard of the gospel. Can you stay behind and continue to talk to us? So this is uh, the experience of mission trips. Let us pray for God to give us this motivation from Paul to preach the gospel. So there is this urge from God. God, a uh, poor, risks his life. For the sake of the gospel. Poor originally had uh, has this Rational mind. He also has this sensitivity of the Holy Spirit and has much feeling. 
or he he's been doing all this not because of edifying himself, but because of the people around him. He want to preach the gospel, and they they get saved, and including those Gentiles, they have never heard of the gospel or read the gospel. And Paul is very sensitive to the Holy Spirit. And he could boldly speak about the faith, no matter where he is, wh- which country or which towns. He brought people to Christ. Today, let's pray for the Holy Spirit to stir up our heart. Be zealous for the gospel, and being moved by God's salvation. And then we cried out for those who have not heard of the gospel.